Hi y'all, this is So So Blessed. Welcome to The Blessed Place. How y'all doing? I have a relationship video for you and let's get started because y'all know my videos can run kind of long and I'm trying not to have it 20 minutes. So, you say your man just won't talk. He just won't communicate. He won't open up. And you believe that age old adage of men don't talk. Wrong. Men do talk, men will talk, but unlike us women, men have to have a comfortable, safe environment to talk in. Women, we go to lunch with people, we talk, we go have a smoke break with people, we talk because we think they're our friends, we will expose our most intimate secrets and vulnerabilities to somebody because we don't have to have a safe environment. We'll just talk. But men, totally opposite. They have to feel comfortable and safe to open up and communicate. And I'm not just talking about your everyday, hi, how you doing, baby, what's up, what you want to eat today, etc. I'm talking about going beyond that and going to some intimate talking. Okay, so let's talk about seven ways you can get your man to open up, communicate, expose his soul to you. Okay, so let me put on my bes spectacles here. And I gotta look down and refer to my notes. Okay, seven ways to get your man to open up and expose his soul. So that y'all can be reunited. Okay, number one, listen. I know it seems so basic, but ladies, we can talk, yeah, talk to myself. We can talk, 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 and not listen. We got to do less talking, more listening. Okay, that is basically self-explanatory. Close your mouth sometimes, Sh shut it down sometime, and listen. Number two, put away distractions. Okay, I'm talking to myself, I'm stepping all on my own toes, I'm preaching to the choir. Put away distractions so that you can listen to your man, so that you can give him attention. Because if a man starts to talk to you and he thinks that you're not listening and you're not giving him the attention that he desires and he deserves, then he will shut it down. So we got to put away our cell phones. Oh, Deidre, get off my toes. Get, get off them toes. You got to get off of the computer, the TV. Um, he's not going to want to compete with your cell phone. He's not going to want to compete with the TV. He don't want to compete with your children. He don't want to compete with your BFFs. So you got to put away distractions. Number three, nonverbal clues. You got to pay attention to your nonverbal clues. If a man starts to talk to you, if your man, your husband, your boyfriend, uh, if he starts to talk to you or he's wanting to talk to you and you are closed up, you got your arms folded, or you are um, looking somewhere else or paying attention to something else, or you, you know your eyes are rolling, or you seem to be um, distracted, or you seem to be irritated or frustrated, you're giving off these nonverbal clues, and he's picking these nonverbal clues up, and then he's like, well, let me leave her alone. Let me not talk to her. Um, she's already frustrated. Uh, she's already distracted. Um, you know, her body, her body language is speaking to me. So our body language speaks, you know, our body language speaks to, to our partner and, and they've been with us long enough to pick up. She doesn't feel like being bothered. So you got to open yourself up. You got to be engaged. Give eye, give eye contact and be engaging and um, be receptive and act like, you know, don't act like you're listening, be listening. You're, you're giving eye contact, you're listening, you're smiling, you're giving some type of utterances like, oh, mm, really? No, wow, really baby? Oh my God. And the more engaged you are, the, a man's ego is kind of fragile. You know, it's kind of kind of sense of ego. I mean, it's masking all these muscles. And then they ain't masking muscles. It's masking some fat. <laughs> but a man's ego is sensitive. 
You know, so um, when you listen to him and when you engage with him and when you seem to be, you're getting pleasure out of what he's telling you and you're enjoying him and you're enjoying that intimacy, it pumps him up even more to want to make you happy, to want to make you laugh, to want to make you engaged. And it makes him feel like a king, like, yes, I can come home and share with my woman and I'm engaging and I'm funny and I'm smart and I'm intelligent and I'm hilarious and I'm... I'm, I'm the king of New York. I'm the king of the castle. And the more you enjoy him and more enjoy his conversation, the more he wants to talk. He can't wait to get off work. So, baby, let me tell you what happened today. And you're like, no, no, you didn't, baby. Oh, my God, really? I, I, I know you handled that. Oh, my good. I'm, I'm so proud of you. Number four. Non-judgment. This is a big one. When a man opens up to you and shares, he, and what a man does, he gives you just a little bit. He gives you just a little, and he tests the water. He just put a little pinky toe in there. Then he put a little, uh, the rest of the toes. Then he put a foot in there. Then he put both feet in there. Then, you know, so forth and so on until he's like up to here, engaged with you in communication and conversation and intimacy. But if he put that baby toe in there and then you judge him, oh, he's taking that baby toe out and he's not putting it back in. He might put it in somebody else's waters, but he ain't putting it in your waters no more because you were judgmental. And what I mean is he comes home, he tells you something, he shares with you about a story or whatever, and then and you're quick to judge him. You're quick to accuse him. You're quick to get upset. You're quick to uh, go off on him. And he's like, whoa, what happened? I was just telling you about my day or I was just telling you about this or that and you're mad and you're going off on me. I mean, I'll just give you an example. My husband, he shares with me all the time. I, I so look forward to him coming home. It's like the highlight of my day to look for him to come home and share a story with me. And, and he, the, he shared several stories with me. Basically, every day he's got a story. But um, one day he told me, he's like, he wore some shorts to work. He normally wear pants and uh, a shirt, but he has the liberty if he wants to wear shorts. And he wore some shorts to work. And he's like, baby, the ladies were looking at my legs. They say, oh, we didn't know you had such nice legs. I mean, if I go off on my husband, I'm jealous. and I go off on a jealous rage or bec uh, become accusatory to him. He's not going to come back at all and tell me what the lady said to him at work. Okay, another way of getting your man to open up to you is to stop telling him all of your BFFs personal business. Okay, everybody know BF BFFs, right? Your friends, your girlfriends, your best friend forever. Stop telling your man about all of her business with her man. Okay, I know some of y'all don't quite get that yet. But what I'm saying is, okay, I got a friend. Her name is Sally. Sally boyfriend or uh, man's name is John. John comes home and talks to Sally, opens up and tells, exposed to her his soul and all his vulnerabilities, his hurts, pains, all, you know, all of that stuff. So Sally comes and tells me all of her business, tells me all of John's business, everything. She doesn't leave anything out. Got me giving John the side eye. Okay, I go home and I tell my man, and we'll say my, name, my man's name is Charles, which it is. So I go and I tell Charles everything. And I mean, I don't leave nothing out because Sally didn't leave anything out. So I tell Charles everything about John's business. And Charles, he might have a comment, he might laugh, whatever. But in his mind, he says, oh no, I won't be telling my woman, Deidre, all of my business and exposing to her all of my hurts, pains, insecurities, vulnerabilities, um, d desires, fantasies, uh, all of that, all of that stuff. And I won't be divulging all of that to my woman, Deidre, because just like Sally tells Deidre everything, Deidre is going to go and tell Sally everything. And then Sally is going to go tell John. And John going to be looking at me with the man side eye. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's the way a man thinks. Believe me. So even if Sally comes to tell you everything about her and John's business, that's okay. That's okay. But don't go tell Charles. Don't go tell your man about other business because you think you're just sharing. You think you're just being intimate. You think you're just communicating. But honey, it is more than that. It goes deeper than that. Honey, the surface goes deep. He starts thinking that 
I'm gonna be telling Deidre not all of my business so that she could go tell her best friend Sally so that Sally can tell John. So, number six, don't press him hard to talk, to open up. Don't whine about it. Don't, uh, I wish you would talk to me. Please talk to me. What are you thinking? What are you feeling? Are you hurting? What happened in your childhood? What's going on with you? What? Okay, you get my drift, right? Don't bug him, frustrate him, overwhelm him, bombard him with your plea and your cries and your whining about him talking. If you follow my steps, I don't care if you're a year into your relationship, five years in relationship, 10 years into your relationship, you just started dating and you think that he doesn't communicate and open up enough to you and you want him to, follow my steps and he will start slowly. Like I said, he's gonna put that pinky toe in there and he's gonna see what happens. And the more and more and more he can trust you, like I said, he's gonna be up there to, in intimacy and communication with you. Number seven, and last, well not quite last, because I have a bonus, but we'll say last, number seven. Don't ever, 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 I don't know if I can say ever, 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 ever enough, don't ever betray his trust. If he tells something, tells you something, opens up to you, cries in front of you, um, just goes, into the depth of his soul with you. And like I say, and he's gonna start small. Baby toe, pinky toe. He's gonna start small. So I don't care if it's from the smallest thing to the heaviest, deepest thing you've ever heard from him. Do not betray his trust. If you tell your mama, your BFF, his friend, put it on YouTube, put it on Facebook because you mad at him because y'all broke up today so you start telling all his business and then y'all got back together like next week but then now he knows yeah we back together but I know not to tell her nothing else I know not to open up to her anymore because when we had that little brief breakup she put all my business up on, on YouTube or Facebook do not betray his trust ever 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 I cannot say that enough a resounding never ever ever and lastly, bonus, number, well, we're not going to call it number eight because this is seven ways to get your man to communicate. But bonus, never, 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 ever, ever, never use what he says to you against him. Maybe he said something to hurt you and so now you want to hurt him, you want to hit below the belt because you want to hit him where it hurts. So you're gonna go to that thing that you know he shared with you that he was vulnerable at that time and he didn't want anybody to know, but he opened up to you and you the first person he ever told this. But then in the midst of an argument or a fight because he hurt your feelings and your feelings were truly hurt. And you may feel that you really, really, really were okay with saying this because hey, he hurt me eye for an eye. Two for two. He hurt me, so I'm going to hurt him. But the difference is, as women, we can get over it. We can get over it, and we back to sharing with you tomorrow, even if you hurt us. But with a man, you hurt him by hitting below the belt and using his vulnerabilities against him and using what he said to you, what he opened up to you, and you use that against him in the midst of a fight or midst of an argument or just to make your point about something, and you use that against him, he will never, ever, ever open up to you again in a, in a deep, intimate way. Yeah, like I said, he's going to talk to you about maybe everyday stuff, but to open up to you and to form real, true intimacy and communication is intricate in intimacy. We got a lot of people having sex, but how many of us are in true, intimate relationships? So if you want, if you think your man doesn't talk or he doesn't talk enough or he doesn't talk and he doesn't go deep the way we as women want our men to go deep. Because when my husband tells me he loves me, I want to know why. And I want to know how deep. And when he tells me that he appreciates me being a good wife, I want to know how am I a good wife. See, you know, we wants to go deep. 
So if you want your man to go deep, if you want true intimacy and communication, then you have to take heed to these, these um, words of advice that I've shared with you. Okay, you guys, it's been a while, so I'm about to cut this off. Thank you all for listening. Thank you for being great supporters of The Blessed Place. And if you are not a subscriber, but you keep coming back to The Blessed Place, just hit that subscribe button. Love y'all. Y'all be blessed. Oh, yeah. And if you notice that I have um, two different earrings, it's because I have on this retro shirt for Throwback Thursday with the Throwback Fro. And I wasn't sure which um, earring I wanted to wear. So I said, I'll go ahead and wear both. Because who go check me, boo? Love y'all. Y'all be blessed.